Right, so in this top network, what we can do is also create a raw, so a raw geometry output. I'm gonna connect it, and I have a preset set up for this that you get when you download from my website. So I'm gonna put this to cache job. I'm gonna, don't worry, I'm gonna explain how this works so you can still do it yourself. Okay. So what the geometry rob uses is use it, uh, it uses a wedge index. So I have, oh, by the way, I, for some reason it's not, okay, so it doesn't load the presets when I do it with the cache job function. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. I'm going, just gonna put it to cash job. I guess it's something I need to fix then. All right, so it will be updated whenever you download. So what this will do is I'm gonna say that this cache to my geo folder, I'm gonna call it coral, just version one, but this thing between backticks, so if you put something between backticks, it will mean it will evaluate what's between here. And the wedge index is just like we did when the, with the wedges here. Uh, when we like typed a wedge uh, somewhere in here. So let's say over here at twist. It's the same thing. This, this, this has uh, the add wedge by default in there. So, so the, the, wedge, uh, the wedge index. And if you type something between backticks, it will evaluate to that thing. So if I middle mouse on this, you can see it evaluates the tree. It's because we're currently running over wedge three. If I go on wedge five, it will evaluate the five, six, seven, whatever. So what this will do if I save it out is it will output this name. Let's maybe do this without the preset so it makes more sense. So let's do these uh, rob geometry output. So I'm not gonna do the preset, just gonna do it ourselves. Okay, so what do we want to do? Okay, we want to, what do we want to output? Our sub path. So our sub path will be the last, the last frame. So let's drag it in. All right. The output. Coral tutorial, blah, blah, blah. So it's going to act, it's going to take this sub and it's going to output it. So it would be similar if we did a file cache and appended it. It's kind of doing this, but then it's going to take this and then output it over here after it did the wedge. So it will first wedge and then output it over here. So it's just dependency graph, right? So where do we want to output it? All right, and by the way, there's like, as you can see, this is the default. So, okay, so the defaults here in Houdini, we're not going to use, I can explain a little bit what, what they do. So again, dollar $hip will default to the, to the hip location. Dollar hip name will be the name of the hip file. Dollar OS will be the name of the prop geometry. And then dollar F will be geo. So I generally don't use this because let's say if you have a Houdini file, like let's say version 1.0, then dollar hip name is going to change. So I, that's why I never really use that. But let's just type something ourselves here. All right. Let's type dollar job. Remember, first set your set your project. Important, else it will not work. Okay, dollar job. Where do we want to cache? Maybe we want to cache in the geo folder, in the folder coral. So this doesn't. So we already have something there, but only the coral tutorial. And maybe call it, put it to coral model for now. And then what do we want to do? We want to Maybe give this a version number. So, so just maybe one, just not zero, zero. And then what we want to do is we want to append a wedge index. So remember, use the backticks. And then we're gonna type add wedge index. So again, this is gonna be the, the wedge number that it's currently running on. So if it's gonna run on this one, you can see it will be wedge zero. And the last one will be wedge nine. So again, and this and it will append it to the file name. All right. So as long as that makes sense. All right. Then we're gonna do. And this 
Well, I mean, maybe we don't even do need to do it. Just type .bgo.sc. We don't need to do a dollar f4 because we don't really need to do any uh, any frame sequences. It just will be static models, right? All right. So now we have this thing set up. So now what we can do is we can um, we could run this. So maybe we want to uh, change some stuff on the web geometry. You know what? Let's just leave it like this and let's just run it. So maybe dirty the wedge first. Let's say how many do we want to generate? Let's put 16 for now. We can also do more uh, more later. So and let's just generate this thing. So how you can generate is a shift V. And then it says node uh, top node depends on hip file. So this is because uh, tops will open up a instance of Houdini in the background, and that instance will will work with the uh, the current hip file. So it needs to save it. Then it's gonna make a copy of that hip file, and then that's gonna run in the background. So it needs to save. Press OK, and you can see now it's gonna run. So we're gonna wait a little bit, and you can see the the green ones is what it's currently now working on. So now it's uh, it's gonna take a little bit because it's viral in the background. But uh gonna be right back when this is finished. Alright, so that thing finished. So if we now go into the output file, you can see we got a whole bunch of models here. So let's just check these models that we generated. So let's go down, put a file out, note down. And let's first just copy parameter and let's paste relative references into the file node. So this is going to error because we're not have a I not don't have a wedge active, but we can go through our wedges like this. Um, oh, and we forgot something by the way. We forgot to change our random color. So let me do that. Add another wedge. And let's add a seed. And type add seed. No, not add weed. Although that might also be fun. Um, put it to random samples. And let's run, run it again. All right. Oh, we need to dirty it first. So let's dirty these nodes with D. And oh, we can also say delete these nodes results from disk. Oh, that's not working because it's not cooked currently. Ah, well, let's just cook it. Now let's delete these nodes from disk. So now they are gone. And now we are going to run them again. All right, so I'll be right back. All right, so they are finished loading. And now you can see we're going to click through it. And we probably need to tweak some stuff because they don't really look as good. The ones that I had in my uh, in my thing, but you can see we get some random stuff. So these have the attributes that we generated. So there's well, there's the random color. There's the rent attribute. So again, it's gonna change for every one of the uh, of the wedges. So I, I don't think our VDB is high. Probably need to change them. Some other stuff as well. So let's have a look at the. Uh... Okay, so some crazy stuff is happening there. So let's see where it's where it's going wrong. We probably need maybe higher resolution, but you can just play around with this for yourself. It's just basic stuff on the uh... yeah, just how the coral was made. We're going to go into how this whole thing was was uh, scattered in the main scene later. Uh, that's in the for the in the higher end tier. This is going to be scattered across the ground. So it's going to be the exclusive one for patrons. So there's going to be uh, a part there where we're going to grab these pieces from disk and then randomly scatter them across across the floor. And of course, once we start diving into the shading, we're going to make the make the material because. I mean, right now they're not looking that great still, but with the material, so in the material, add 
extra detail and stuff. So then they're gonna look really cool. So now we have the coral uh, generated. Um, so we still need to shade it, of course, and we're gonna do that later. Um, and the placement of the coral on the ground, uh, we're gonna cover that in the uh, exclusive part of the course, uh, which is in the, uh, the $50 tier that I explained earlier. So then, then we're gonna uh, learn how we can scatter this across, uh, across the ground and load a random piece of geometry from disk um, based on a random value. So that's gonna be inside the, uh, the exclusive part of putting the whole scene together. Um, but yeah, for, for now, let's uh, call the coral down and let's uh, move into how we can make some rocks. And yeah, and after that, after the rocks, rock is done, we have almost everything. We just need to uh, learn how to do, we can do the shading. Uh, well, we have the bubbles that we still need to do, of course. And then, uh, well, and then we can start putting the whole thing together. Mm -hmm. 